so what is PCOS? How does it affect women? And what can we do about it? So first, what is PCOS? Um, this video is about my journey with PCOS and insulin resistance. So I think I should start off the video by talking about what PCOS is. So I'm on the Mayo Clinic's website and per the Mayo Clinic's website, polycystic ovary syndrome, PCOS, is a problem with hormones that happens during the reproductive years. If you have PCOS, you may not have periods very often, or you may have periods that last many days. You may also have too much of a hormone called androgen in your body. With PCOS, many small sacs of fluid develop along the outer edge of the ovary. Um, these are called cysts. So you have your regular period. You're going to have problems with fertility, right? Because if you're not ovulating, then there's no egg to fertilize. So a lot of women in their 20s and 30s who are trying to get pregnant and have PCOS um, can sometimes struggle with this. So symptoms of PCOS often start around the same time of the first menstrual period. Sometimes symptoms develop later after you have the periods for a while. A diagnosis of PCOS is made when you have at least two of these. So irregular periods, too much androgen, or polycystic ovaries. So you need two out of those three in order to have PCOS. Causes are insulin resistance, low-grade information, heredity, and excess androgen. That's what they list as the causes of PCOS. Complications are gestational diabetes, infertility, miscarriage or premature birth, metabolic syndrome, type 2 diabetes, prediabetes, sleep apnea, depression, and cancer of the uterine lining. Ugh. I was living in Denver. I had just moved there from New York City. So I was living in New York City with my husband. I was working um, as a consultant. We were living in hotels. We didn't have a kitchen. Um, we were eating out all the time. Food in New York is hella good. And we ate a lot of it and we ate out a lot. And I got fat. I felt really stressed out and so the anxiety didn't help because I cope by eating shit food. That's what led me to gain a lot of weight. And in 2015, when I got to Denver, I was in a place where I wanted to get healthier. The elevation in Denver is about 5,000 feet. It makes walking up the stairs extremely challenging because there's like less oxygen to breathe. So getting healthy in Denver was, I wouldn't say it's, it was easy, but it was easier because I enjoy hiking and there was just the beautiful Rocky Mountains, fresh air, beautiful weather. Um, even if it snowed, like the next day it would be sunny and the snow would melt. So it wasn't crazy. It was just, it was just a really nice place to um, be outside. Uh, and that is what I enjoy. I enjoy being outside. The hiking really helped me to get healthy and I also, kind of dove into veganism and clean beauty and all of that in 2015. So that also helped me get healthy. Uh, I grew up in the 90s with immigrant parents and their goal was always to feed their kids. They didn't always have food on the table when they were growing up. And Sorry about that, that's the bathtub. My son's getting a bath. We ate a lot of Indian food. We had a lot of hamburger helper. So whether it was pasta, rice, roti, whatever, there were always carbs on my plate. Um, sugar wasn't exactly frowned upon. We had sugary cereals that my mom, I think, tried to like put plain Cheerios in to like cut the sugar, but still sugary cereal. Uh, if we were running late for school, my dad would like stop by the 7-Eleven and get us donuts. Um, and we would have donuts for breakfast and if he was feeling nice, he would take us to get ice cream after school. Um, if my mom was working late, he would take us to Taco Bell or, you know, get a... So we'd get like seven layer birdies at Taco Bell or we would get BK Big Fish from Burger King. Uh, so that's, that's kind of the stuff I grew up eating. 
Um, and I think a lot of us ate that kind of food, like very processed foods uh, growing up in the 90s, like little Debbie snacks in our um, in our lunch bags. Like, those are the kinds of foods that I grew up eating. Um, and I didn't really make the connection in like middle school and high school. I had recurrent yeast infections um, and I didn't know that yeast infections could be caused by um, higher blood sugar levels um, or insulin resistance, whatever you want to call it. In 2015, when I was at the gynecologist's office, I literally was asking her, am I dirty? Am I doing something wrong? Am I not cleaning myself well? Like, why do I keep getting these yeast infections? She was like, you're not a dirty person. But she basically said, maybe we need to check your blood and um, run some tests and I want to do an ultrasound of your ovaries. And so I was like, uh, okay. Uh, she told me that I had PCOS because I met the criteria that I described earlier. I had higher androgen levels because I had all of this extra coarse hair here. And I remember, like, when I look back, I, I think about the things that happened and, like, I didn't really know why they happened. Like, I had lasered my upper lip. Um, and after I was done with the lasering treatments, it didn't go away because I have darker skin and darker hair. Um, it was lessened. But, so, like, it, it worked. Like, I had less hair on my upper lip. But I remember I got all of this extra hair down here. And I was like, that happened because I got lasered and... At the time, I thought maybe it was the lasering, but the nurse who did the lasering was like, no, this sounds like a hormone problem. And he was right. When I look back on it, like, it was a hormone problem. Current yeast infections were a sign. The increased hair, coarse hair on my chin was another sign. Um, but nobody really helped me put it together until 2015. And at that point, I had been married for two years. I was obviously thinking about getting pregnant at some point in time. Wasn't ready to start right then, but I knew I wanted to get pregnant and PCOS affects fertility. And so that was a concern of mine and it was a concern of my husband's. I decided that I was going to get healthy and lose weight. So I did, I went hiking, I went vegan, going vegan, didn't necessarily mean I ate healthier. I feel like I still ate a lot of bread and all of the meat and dairy that would have filled me up, that I would have typically eaten, was now being replaced by bread because a lot of, at the time in 2015, a lot of the vegan meat sources were made out of vital wheat protein. Um, and they tasted really good, they tasted a lot like meat, but they were basically bread. <laughs> it was challenging to figure that part out. I did lose weight, I did feel healthier. In 2017, my husband and I moved to LA and I was working with kids and I was feeling all warm and fuzzy inside and I wanted my own kid and so I was like ready. It didn't happen right away. And feeling guilty that my PCOS was stopping me from being a mother um I felt bad for my husband because then I felt like it was my fault um because I I had done this to myself I had given myself PCOS it was not fun to go through that it was I felt guilt and I felt shame because of my PCOS and because of my um perceived infertility uh it only took about six months for me to get pregnant, so it wasn't bad at all. And at the end of summer in 2018, I did get pregnant with my first. I was talking to somebody who was a vegan when she was pregnant and she recommended that I include more eggs and dairy into my diet because I needed more protein. My doctor also said I needed more protein, but I started eating a lot of eggs and having a lot of yogurt and cheese, I also started to just eat for two. Um, that was not good. Eating for two is a bad idea. Um, 
for me it was because I gained 50 pounds. I was eating Domino's and a bunch of other shit that I probably didn't need to be eating like donuts and shit. Um, <laughs> vegan donuts. Vegan donuts are still donuts. They're not that healthy. Um, they just don't have like butter and shit that is dairy. My doctor told me that I needed to go on a low carb diet and I was about to take my my um, glucose tolerance test. So about three days before my glucose tolerance test, I decided to go keto. Um, that was very extreme and it was very unhealthy. And I basically went to sugar withdrawal. My husband had to drive me home from work and I was just like shaking in the car. I couldn't think clearly. Uh, my body was just not happy um it was like kind of in shock because i had just cut out the sugar entirely while i was pregnant and so don't do that that's very unhealthy it's not good for you or your baby um i passed the glucose tolerance test yippee um so i didn't have gestational diabetes but i that was not a good idea so that was my first pregnancy i ended it at 207 um I tried to get into like a workout routine. I tried to lose the weight and eat healthier, but it didn't really happen. And then the pandemic hit and I couldn't really go to bar anymore. So like I got into bar, I was really excited about it. I did see that I was like getting stronger, getting leaner Then the pandemic hit. And then we had to do bar at home and it's not the same. Um, and then, of course, everyone's mental health was affected, especially if you were living in California because you were in your house for so long. And I never really lost the weight. Plus, we couldn't really go outside. You couldn't go hiking. You couldn't, like, go to the beach. All of the outdoor activities that are were helpful for health were not allowed. So you, if you were going to work out, you had to work out in the house. Um... And it's hard to work out with a kid because they always want to get into whatever you're doing. Um, and they like close your laptop when you're exercising or trying to do bar. So um, it was definitely challenging. In 2021, I got pregnant with my second and I was two. So I started that out at 207. Um, I didn't gain as much weight. Thank God. Um, I did start eating meat because I was craving meat. So I started eating meat and I was working full time. Um, plus I had my other kids, so it was it was very stressful. Um, and so I would go to the drive-thru at Chick-fil-A on my way to work um, and I'd probably go to the drive-thru on my way home from work. So I wasn't eating the healthiest. And I took the glucose tolerance test again and I had gestational diabetes. I can't say that I was very surprised. So it kind of was what it was. And it was a rude awakening for sure. Because I felt, again, more guilt and shame. Because I felt like I was hurting my baby. And I didn't want to do that. I didn't want to harm my unborn child. When I started to talk to the registered dietitian, um, I got one of these glucose monitor, which is pretty expensive. Even my blood sugar four times a day, I was logging everything I ate. Everything. Um, it was challenging to do that, but I did it. And I made more mindful decisions at the plate. My breakfasts were like, like vegetables, a lot of vegetables, meat and eggs. Also, I was living with my parents at the time. They helped me to eat healthier. My husband helped me to eat healthier. My brother helped, everybody helped to take care of my son so that I could focus on eating healthier to take care of my second son who was in my belly. He did come out bigger. They said that when you have gestational diabetes, your baby can come out fatter and not like in a cute way, but like the baby has too much fat and just comes out I don't know what it is, but it's like an unhealthy fatter. My second 
son came out heavier than my first son um but he was healthy they did check his blood sugars when he was born and he was healthy they checked mine and i was good so the gestational diabetes did go away but um i still felt off i still have a hard time losing weight i still have pcos i want to vlog what i eat in a day so that i can be more mindful as a mom of two, it's really hard to be mindful about what I eat. I have to watch my kids. I want to have this YouTube channel. I, you know, want to clean the house. I, like, there's just a million things to do as like a homemaker. Uh, I don't always have the time to eat because if I'm eating, my son wants to eat what I'm eating. So then I end up giving him my food and then he wants me to hold him and I try to eat my food, but then he's like putting his hand in my food. Uh, and so it just, it can be hard to, to eat, to just find time to eat, much less cook. So I do find myself at the drive-thru and I never thought I would be at the drive-thru at like Raising Cane's or Popeye's, but I live in Texas and you can find me at the drive-thru at Popeye's. It's pretty embarrassing. So my plan is to vlog what I eat so that I can see how what I eat, how I exercise, um, and how things like apple cider vinegar and other hacks are affecting my blood sugar. So I forgot to say thank you for watching my channel. Thank you for following my vlog. I hope that you watching me take control of my insulin resistance encourages you to, um, manage your own insulin resistance or deal with your PCOS or whatever it is. So thank you for watching my channel. I'm OT Amma. I, I need to get better at this whole YouTube thing, but thank you.